everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to the craft slash dining room. Do you recycle your card designs? Because I do. And the reason why, if you have a design that you love and is working, why not repeat it? Grab some different products, line it up the same way, mix up your color, because nine out of 10 times you're going to emerge with something that does look eh, surprisingly different, even if it's based on the exact same design. Today's card project is a repeat of something I did a few weeks back, and I will link that up in one of the cards up here so you can see that card as well. Plus I'll show you at the end of the video, so stick around. My repeated and recycled design card coming up next. So here's a look at my recycled card design today. And this card, simple as it is, it has some awesome glitz and shine. And I'm really excited with how it turned out, even if it does look vaguely familiar. Let's take a look at the products I'm using today. The dice that I'm using is called Chunky Trees and Holly. And this design is very similar to a stamp set that I did, but this is a standalone die in shadow. It cuts out trees and it cuts out the holly and the shadow layers. I'm also gonna use this unicorn confetti from Simon Says Stamp. It's kind of hard to pick that up on camera right there, but it is chunky, glittery goodness. My sentiment will be pre-printed sentiment strips and I'm going to use a little deco foil because these strips can be foiled. They are toner-based printing and we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. I'll also be using some Nina Solar White Classic Crest cardstock in the 110 pound weight. All right, let's start with die cutting. I am gonna cut out a whole bunch of trees and a couple of shadow layers, well actually three. And I'm gonna do that with my Gemini Junior. I'm gonna cut those all off camera until I have a gaggle of die cuts, just like that. And I'm going to glue them together with my spray adhesive. Now I like to spray this in just a cardboard box, off camera, away from my filming area. And yes, I do hold my breath because those fumes are slightly noxious. But once I layer on that adhesive and spray it down, then I can quickly glue and stack the die cuts together for some awesome dimension. Love doing this and the spray adhesive, it just, quickly adds that layer of adhesive and it makes this process really quick. All right, then I'll glue that onto the shadow layer. And sometimes it takes me a little while to get this lined up. And the thing about the spray adhesive, it's a little less forgiving. So you wanna make sure you get it right where you want it before you press too hard, cause it doesn't wanna come back up once it's down. So there's tree one and I will do the rest off camera. Moving on. Now, I've got them lined up kind of how I want them to be on my card front. I love this uh, cutting mat because it has the card shape on it. And everything's lined up, so I'm gonna take a little bit of post-it tape here to pick the three of these up, perfectly lined up so I can flip them over and then I can add my adhesive to the back. And I thought I would pop these up with just some thin foam squares. These are my probably my favorite foam squares. They're not as thick as a regular foam square. That's why they're called thin. Now I'll prep my card base. This is going to be a USA 2 card, so five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Give that a nice press on that score line, and then I'll tape it closed because this cardstock is so thick it likes to kind of pop open and I need my card bases to stay flat when I am adhering my elements. All right, taping that closed. And now I'll just take all the backers off of the foam squares. And then another thing I like to do with this is just add a little bead of liquid glue into the center of each foam square. All this does is it gives me just a little bit more playtime to get this on my card, wiggle it into place before I press and commit to the final placement. My ruler comes in just to help with the straightening and I realized I needed to come down just a tiny bit and that liquid glue gives you just a little bit of a hydroplane effect. Then I will press, make sure it's nicely adhered, peel back that post-it tape and look at that beautifully lined up and placed trees. So I'm gonna keep the connect glue out because I'm going to fill in the open areas of the die cuts with the glue. Just kind of loosely putting it in and once I get all the glue in there, I'm gonna spread it to the corners with my little toothpick. Super easy to do this. 
And now it's time for the glitter. So I'm just pouring it on. And I have to tell you this. If you had told me three years ago I would put glitter on anything, I would have laughed you out of the room. But my friends, glitter doesn't have to be so frightening, especially not chunky glitter. Chunky glitter is kind of cool because I, I think it's not going to get in perhaps as many places as super fine glitter, but I think this stuff is awesome. So I'm shaking it out and look at how fun that is. Oh, it just sticks to the glue. It's got so much color going on. And then once it's dry, I just take a dry brush and just brush off any errant piece of chunky glitter that I can see with my with my naked eye, and we are good to go. How fun is that? It's neutral, right, with the white on white die cuts, but that adds, that adds some fun. Now I'm gonna cut my sentiment out using one of my favorite labels, these Simon Sentiment labels. And I cut out two because I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. Grabbed a little piece of foil, and I just popped it right into my little parchment foil carrier, if you will. I just put a piece of cardstock in there to add a little extra pressure. And I'm gonna run that through the mink, not just once, but I'm gonna run it through a second time. Now these sentiment labels are printed with a toner-based ink, which is why you can foil them. It's kind of a cool thing that sometimes people don't know this, and when I peel this off, you can see how that peri, I think it's called Prince Periwinkle, that foil has transferred to the sentiment strips. And it's not always perfect. I could see a little extra black and I could just run that through again, but I thought, you know what? I think this looks great. I'm just gonna put a strip of glue on the back so wherever it makes contact with the trees, it will stick. And I brought in my ruler again, just because I, you know, when there's not much going on, eh, might, might as well, you know, make it straight. And look at the color on this foil. It's so cool because it initially reads as a lavender, but when you start moving it around, it's super iridescent. Like you get a whole rainbow reflection in there and it is a perfect foil for that glitter confetti unicorn stuff. Ah, oh, I love it. Shiny, fun goodness. And again, this design, oh, I've, I've done this before, but it looks completely different with different products. So that is the finished card. So shiny, so shiny. And there's the inspiration card. It's even the same tree, except this guy. This is an actual die that cuts the shape out. Oh, this buddy is a stamp. But you can see, same design, different feel. Okay, maybe not that different of a feel, but you know what? They're both winners. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.